Fountain Valley is a suburb in Orange County, California. As of 2010, 55,313 people call Fountain Valley their home. Incorporated on June 13, 1957, Fountain Valley has an area of 9 square miles and is 33 feet above sea level. Talbert, which is also known as Gospel Swamp, was a settlement established starting off as a general store with an abundance of nearby beet farms. Hey, my name is Ben Nielsen. I was a former mayor of Fountain Valley, elected in 1978, spent nine and a half years on the city council. After that, I spent about uh, 10 years on the Orange County Planning Commission. Been in Fountain Valley for about 45 years. I used to live over on the other side of Mile Square Park over off of Heil and uh, Euclid. Probably the greatest memory over there was the continual flying of helicopters over our house every night. You could set your clock to it, doing touch and goes at Mile Square Park which used to be a landing strip for the Marine Corps. Uh, after spending some time over there, we moved back over into the uh, city, uh, main part of Fountain Valley, and my kids attended Fountain Valley High School. I spent some time uh, being uh, Booster Club president of Fountain Valley High School and uh, did some fun things over there. Uh, Fountain Valley is an interesting city. It's, a, it's kind of a sleepy town, but it's a great town to raise a family. They have great schools here, great city council. They always are very conservative and they watch the money and uh, do a good job there. Raising a family here was uh, a great experience. You know, like I said, great schools, uh, elementary schools, junior high schools, and, uh, and, and, and high schools, obviously. Our first house we bought here, we paid $29,000 for. That house today sells for in the neighborhood of about seven or 800000 So. You know, real estate investment in Fountain Valley has always been really great. We did have three visits by presidents. We have a very vibrant community, very vibrant Vietnamese community, and they've, they've added a lot to the community in terms of being good, good uh, community members. The 405 freeway runs through Fountain Valley, which is how most residents of Southern California know it's there. You probably recognize it by the giant water tower where the freeway exits. Neighbored by Santa Ana, Costa Mesa, Westminster, Garden Grove, and Huntington Beach, it's easy for Fountain Valley to get lost in its neighbor's shadows. One thing that sets Fountain Valley apart from its neighbors is how well the community takes care of each other. An example of this is the weekly food drive that takes place every Thursday since the pandemic started for the seniors at the Senior Center, who just celebrated their 15th anniversary. Meals on Wheels partners with the Senior Center and City Council to make sure no seniors go hungry. I met with Kim Constantine, City Council Member for Fountain Valley at the Food Drive. Hi, I'm Fountain Valley Council Member Kim Constantine and welcome to the Fountain Valley Senior Center. We are about to distribute senior meals to some very happy seniors as we do every Thursday. We have a lot of seniors already in line waiting for the uh, meal distribution. They come every Thursday and pick up meals, uh, six meals and uh, fruit and milk and crackers and sometimes a word puzzle book and they're very excited to, to be here. They're anxiously awaiting the opening of the Senior Center. Uh, right now we're pending because we cannot yet be open, but uh, we do connect with the seniors online via Zoom and phone calls, and uh, it's been working well for the last several months. Yolanda Rios Markey is the Recreation Coordinator at the Senior Center, and in addition to coordinating these events, she also directs traffic. Welcome, this is our grab and go program here at the City of Fountain Valley in conjunction with Meals on Wheels. We're so proud to be able to serve our community by giving them meals every Thursday. 
It's a great program. You know, one of the important things that we want to strive for here at the Found Valley Senior Center is to make sure that our seniors are engaged, informed, and that we give them all the information that they need so that they can make an educated decision on how they want to proceed. But most importantly, we want to make sure they have enough food on their table that can last for a week, and then next week we'll do it all over again. So come on by and say hi to us. Also making a giant difference in the community during this pandemic is the owner of Felicious and Pizza D's, Bao Jonathan Gio Wynn, who's also feeding seniors during this pandemic. Welcome to Fountain Valley Pizza D's. We came to Pizza D's to check it out, and boy, were we impressed. <laughs> Welcome to Pizza D's in Fountain Valley. These are uh, my co-partners, and today we also have uh, our main chef, Nacho here. Nacho just brought out um, our signature heart shaped pizza. So, what flavors are on here, Nacho? Pepperoni, pineapple, sausage, and sweet basil. Wonderful. And today uh, is also Violet's birthday, so that's the reason why we brought this pizza out. We're all known about, you know, our main focus is about family. So, family always comes first at Fountain Valley Pizza D. So Fountain Valley Pizza D's has been around for uh, over 40 years. It's actually one of your historical landmark in Fountain Valley. Uh, we've had people meeting their, their lover here for the first time 40 years ago. We've had people that actually had the graduation here. We had birthdays. This is a place where we build history. So originally it was Fountain Valley uh, Pizza Di Oro and nickname was Fountain Valley Pizza D's. So therefore, when we come in, we change the name to Pizza D's with a Z at the end, only because we wanted to include the younger generation, which is the Z generation that's going on right now. So imagine a place where you have a mixture of history along with the presence. And that's what we need in a community like Fountain Valley. Of all the things Fountain Valley is known for, its greatest export is still the people who live there and make the community a strong place. Anna has lived in Fountain Valley since she was young and has no plans on leaving now. Hi, my name is Ann Bettinger and I've been a resident of Fountain Valley for 43 years. I've lived in the Huntington Beach Fountain Valley area for 48 years. Um, I've raised uh, my two children here in Fountain Valley. They went to the now gone Harper School, um, James O. Harper School, elementary school, and uh, graduated from Fountain Valley High School. The city has changed a lot in those years, uh, a lot of development, and um, you know, as a resident, I've watched it grow. I'm really happy to live here, and I don't have any place else I'd rather live. We have a city that is mostly residential uh, with some businesses. During this pandemic, it's been really sad to see longtime businesses fold. And it'll be interesting to see what the future looks like for our city. The police department is the best. They are attentive and handle things well within the community. The motto of the city is, it's a nice place to live. And I really, truly feel that I can say from my point of view that it is. On Brookhurst in Fountain Valley sits a reptile zoo and store. It's one of those places that's much bigger on the inside than it appears from the outside. The adventure starts quickly, and before you know it, you're walking down long aisles with iguanas, lizards, and snakes that have their eye on you. The rock face sectionals on the tanks is a very pleasing design that appears throughout the entire store. It was designed by Jay Brewer, who owns this massive reptile zoo. 
The animals here were either born here, rescued, or had been privately owned. This unique place provides the community with an educational and unforgettable experience. Hi, my name is Dan Gibb. I'm with the Found Valley Historical Society. I'm here at Heritage Park to uh, invite you all to come out and learn a little bit about the city you live in. Where we got our name. It's been around since the 1870s. Although we were known as the town of Talbert from 1899 when we applied for post office from the McKinley administration and it stayed the town of Talbert in the area of Fountain Valley until 1957 when we incorporated and went back to the original name. But there's lots to know and lots to learn so get in touch with us and, and uh, we'll tell you a few interesting stories from our military ties to our ties with a few presidents and uh, among other things. Get in touch with us. Hope to see you soon. Green Valley is a neighborhood in Fountain Valley where the neighbors take care of each other and hold events that better their neighborhood. We attended one of these events, which was a fundraiser for the Max Love Project. Aloha, this is Jimmy with Howley Boys Shave Ice here in Fountain Valley, California. We're here doing a fundraiser for Max Love Project and Carter Strong Forever Chalk Walk uh, team. So basically, we're trying to get more involved with the community here and do something positive because COVID has everyone kind of locked up and kind of stuck in their homes. We're trying to do something to change the, you know, make people feel good about what's going on in the community. So we bring our food trucks out. Uh, tonight we have Burn Buns with us and uh, they're also donating a portion of their sales as well uh, to the same project. And uh, basically we're out here trying to get involved in the community, let people come out, hang out in the park, enjoy the outdoors, their neighbors, kind of remember what community is all about. Along with all the stories of people taking care of each other in Fountain Valley comes the story of a family who is still surviving the ultimate tragedy. I'm Jamie Ankeny. This is my husband Tim and my daughter Taylor. So we are fundraising tonight for the Max Love Project and they are a nonprofit in Orange County dedicated to helping families thrive in the face of a diagnosis of childhood cancer. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and this cause is very near and dear to us. Our son was diagnosed with leukemia in 2015 and that's how we came to know Max Love Project. They are a wonderful community that focuses on survivorship from day one. They focus on the overall wellness of the whole family. So they do that with culinary medicine, so food is medicine, um, sleep, and optimizing exercise, mindfulness, and building a community of support. Our son battled leukemia for two years and then he relapsed and unfortunately wasn't able to survive the treatments. And so we really take September to promote childhood cancer awareness and, the, and we have dedicated our lives to his honoring his legacy and trying to raise funds for childhood cancer research because the government only gives allocates 4% of national funding to childhood cancer research. So it's not enough. And our son, if you met him, he was a warrior and he never seemed sick a day in his life. And he definitely thrived against cancer. Um, and unfortunately, just based on the treatments, he wasn't able to 
Um, it was a rare infection just because of the treatments that he had, um, but we didn't have any other options. So we, we just honor him and our Carter Strong forever and follow his lead forever. <laughs> Carter will always be remembered by his family, his friends, and those who loved him. Unlike the cancer in some adults, childhood cancer cannot be prevented and is not the result of a lifestyle choice that that child made. The average adult loses 17 years of their life due to cancer. The average child loses 71. Between its history, its restaurants, its people, and its caring attitude, Fountain Valley is so much more than just a nice place to live. <laughs>